Welcome to Session 2 of our CorelDRAW Q&A series. I'm Roger Womble, Senior Product Trainer at Corel. In this video, we'll be answering questions submitted by CorelDRAW users on a variety of topics. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the link in the description below to go to our tutorial page. Here you can download a written copy of this Q&A session and submit your own questions to be answered in an upcoming video. Let's begin. In creating a distressed look, what type of image works best? This question was posted along with my video on the Discovery Center on how to create a distressed look. There are a couple of different ways that you can achieve the distressed look in Corel Draw. In my video, I show how to create the effect with a bitmap. Now there's no hard and fast rule as to what type of image is used or which works best, but I find best results with images of tree bark, rusty metal, or even some cloud formation. I'm not able to separate a shadow from an object in Corel Draw. What's happening? When we add a drop shadow to an object, group of objects, or text, that object then becomes what we call a control object. Changing it will change the way the drop shadow behaves. For example, if I select this piece of text, in the status bar, I have control text. It gives the font name followed by the layer name. If I change the shape of the text, let's say with the envelope tool, the drop shadow will change as well. And that is as a result of the text controlling that drop shadow. I'm going to undo this. Now, if I go to the Objects menu and expand this, you'll notice that I have the artistic text as well as the drop shadow. If I select in between, I'm actually selecting the entire group. Now, if I go to my Objects menu, because I have the group selected, I now have the ability to break drop shadow apart, thereby allowing me to delete that drop shadow, move it around, or do whatever I want to with it. In Corel Draw, how do you break apart text to move letters closer? To break apart text is fairly straightforward. With the text selected, go to the Objects menu and down to Break Artistic Text shows the font name apart. Once I've done that, it's actually separated each individual word into a piece of text. If I repeat that command, Object, break text apart. It will break it apart into individual characters and I can move those. However, it's not really necessary to do that. Let me do a control Z to undo. We'll go back to our full string of text. Now with the text selected, if I click on the shape tool, you'll notice that I have these handles here. If I left click and drag, this will allow me to change my spacing between the characters. If I hold the shift key down, this allows me to change the spacing between the words. With paragraph text, again, shift key, this allows for word kerning. And over here allows me to change the leading or spacing between the lines. Now, of course, I can also go into the properties docker and make changes to that over here as well. There is no Arrange tab, and I can't find it anywhere. With the release of CorelDRAW X7, we changed the name of the Arrange drop-down menu to simply call it Objects, and it can be found here. How can we import a PageMaker file into CorelDRAW? I have a 20-page file. A PageMaker file can be successfully brought into CorelDRAW by exporting it as an EPS or publishing to PDF. With a multi-page document, it's best to use a PDF file format. In CorelDRAW, rather than importing the file, it would be better if we were to open the PDF file. In this way, you'll maintain the proper page size of the original file. I have a white line going through my texture fill. How can I fix this? 
When creating a pattern in Corel Draw, it's important to make sure that the artwork is properly aligned. This can be accomplished through the Align and Distribute Docker. If I go into Pixel View from the View menu and select Pixels, and then I'll zoom in to this upper right hand corner, you'll notice that I have a lighter color here. This is anti-aliasing. And when I take that color and, and use it as a pattern, you'll notice that it will cause this lighter colored line going through the pattern itself. So in order to fix that, I'm just going to zoom back out and zoom in to this once again. With this selected, I'll go to my Windows menu, down to Dockers, and then Align and Distribute. Here we have the ability to align with Pixel Grid. Now let me just zoom in on this a little bit more. When I click on Align with Pixel Grid, what it's doing is it's actually shifting that object to meet within the constraints of the grid itself. Now, if I took this object and I duplicate that, and I move this over two inches, and I'll scroll down to where we had the brown objects, you'll see I no longer have that line leading through there. I have an object that is covered by a transparent bitmap, and I cannot select the object without moving the bitmap. What can I do? If you place an object over top of another object, there are a couple of ways to select the object below. I can move the top object off to the side and modify this one or select this one. However, I then have an issue with making sure this is properly aligned. Alternatively, with the Alt key held down, if I click on this element, you'll notice in my status bar that it's selected the object below. And now if I want to make changes to that, it's easy enough to do so. In this scenario here, I have a transparent bitmap. We see the transparent portion here over top of some other objects. Now, if I want to select this gear, when I click on it, it's going to select my bitmap here. So same way, hold the Alt key down and click. This allows me to dig down, we call this a digger tool, allows me to dig down one level and select the object that's below that. I have lost my color palette on the right side of my workspace in CorelDRAW 2018. How can I get it back? This uh, is not specific to CorelDRAW 2018, and in fact, can apply to any version of CorelDRAW. If you've lost the palette on the right-hand side of the screen and want to get it back, simply go to your Windows menu, down to Color Palettes, and then select Default Palette. That will bring the palette back up onto the right-hand side of the screen. Alternatively, you could also go to Windows, down to Color Palettes, and then Palettes. This will open up the Palettes Docker, whereby you can select whatever palette you want on the right, and in fact, you can select multiple palettes and uh, put, those, uh, put those there. I'll just turn this one off, and let's go on to our next question. How do I turn off pop-up ads when I close CorelDRAW 2019? Now again, with this question, it's not specific to 2019, but whatever version of CorelDRAW you happen to be using. Quite easy to do. From the Help menu, go down to Message Settings, and in here, deselect Keep Me Informed with Latest Product Updates and Related Messages. Deselect Automatically Download and Install Free Product Updates. And then I can select uh, under Receive Updates, Offers as Tray Notifications, select this and Do Not Show Me Tray Messages, and then click OK. That will effectively turn off those pop-ups for you. That brings us to the end of Session 2. Again, if you're watching this video on YouTube, click on the link in the description below or go to our tutorial page. Here you can download a written copy of this Q&A session and submit your own questions to be answered in an upcoming video.